Hey guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show, your best friend in science, astronomy, and telescopes. Look what I have for you. Now I know I have showed you guys something similar about two years ago, the Max Vision 5 inch, or it was 127 millimeter, uh, F9.3, 1200 millimeter focal length. But I just found this guy. It's a, the Mead LXD55, the EMC. So slightly older, this is an Acromat. So it's a 5 inch, 127 millimeter, focal length of 1180, focal ratio 9.3. So it is an Acromat. The front looks pretty good. I'll show that to you guys in a minute. But anyway, uh, nothing wrong with a Acromat. Uh, again, guys. So uh, again, yeah, I guess I'll show you the, this is an LXD55 go-to mount, but because it's an older mount, probably minimum 15 years to 18 years, it's actually very smooth. Motions are extremely smooth for its age. It's not seized up in any way like I've seen a lot of mounts. It's pretty rigid. Aluminum tripod is thick aluminum, has nice pointy feet. Why don't I show it to you guys a bit closer? You got these nice pointy feet there. The aluminum's, you know, decent quality. 11 pound counterweight there. Uh, the Meads, the 55s and the 75s had a longer counterweight shaft and that's because that way the longer it is uh, and the lower you put that weight it can actually balance uh, instead of like one or two weights. It does look, you know, it's your CG5 EQ5 class mount. Now this is not the older kind. So maybe this is one of the latest models that were released at that time because it's already Vixen. A compatible the other ones were not Vixen compatible you have your latitude adjustment here uh, I like these kind that have you know your uh, a locking nut on this side and that side you do have a polar scope option here it was a go-to but the um, electronics was no longer working so I took it off it does come with a nice 8x50 finder scope six alignment thumb screw instead of just three sometimes and it looks like a nice straight through finder two inch focus it's a two inch focuser i mean it's not the newest kind but there's your inch and a quarter adapter but right now it's using inch and a quarter diagonal adapter and a rack and pinion uh, focus uh, this tube actually looks in good condition um, a lot of these and the Bresner names and uh, that type of ones, you can tell it has a really short dew shield. I think a little too short for this size should probably come out, I think, to at least there. Um, there is the front. The optics looks like it's in good condition. The coatings. And I think you can uh, get to the push-pull system if you take the dew shield off. I won't do that right now. And there's the tray. Now this guy here did something special, or he did a custom, I wanna show it to you guys. He did a custom dual speed on his own. So it just looks like he was able to put this type of adapter plate on here, which replaces, you know, the one wheel and the bottom plate. And then he put this wheel with this other smaller wheel here. And as you can see, it actually does work as a slow motion or a dual speed focus. Now, I guess that's, you know, if you're good at tinkering and then your your main focus over here, I'll use the other side. So you can see there's the rough focus and then you have this. So, so I guess it was pretty good. Okay, so there you go. So the reason why I wanted to show you guys this scope and why I picked it up is because I also have a friend who lent me, I'm not sure, which video is going to come out when but what we're going to do is actually somebody on the channel and the member actually has an iStar 127 millimeter refractor which is a 5 inch f12 now iStar is supposed to be a higher end 
uh, Acromat kind of thing. They figure the lens and polish it better than the mass-produced ones. So it's supposed to be as good as an Acromat as you can. From my reading, they say it's equivalent to something like an F20. Uh, I think they even say maybe even as good as an F30. That's to be seen, I guess, but this is an F9. So it's probably, it's mass produced, probably wouldn't be as good as a hand figured telescope made good quality. What I'm going to do is ask Alp if I can do a side by side. So both of them are 127 millimeters. This is F9.3, his is F12 and do some comparison. Then maybe uh, you guys uh, want to do another video. I believe I showed this to you guys a little while ago. So my friend Frank has a Mead Maxutov. It's the made in the US version. So it's the older one, not the made in Mexico or China version. TX 127. So then I want to either, you know, do a comparison between this. I mean, they're both Mead scopes, but this is a 127 millimeter clear aperture refractor. It's gonna have some color, but this also has a central obstruction, of course, guys. So uh, this is F15, I believe 1800 millimeters. So what do you think would be better on, you know, double star splitting and the uh, moon and planets uh, between these two? And then what do you think is gonna be better between this guy and the I-Star F12? Then maybe what we could do is I can test these two side by side. Then I can do the I-Star versus this side by side. And then as you guys know, I also have another telescope that's in this size class. That would be a very good comparison to whatever comes out on top. The William Optics 126 ED. It has a 53 lens, which is the high grade lens. So again, I don't know if this would compete to the William Optics or this one would, or the I-Star, but I have enough of these that I can compare side by side against each other and come out with the conclusion. Now, what do, what do you guys think is gonna win between this one and the I-Star F12? Or what do you think these two are gonna win? The Maxutov against this one. What about the Maxutov against the I-Star? Okay, or what about this guy against the William Optics? You know, I don't know how long I have this guy to borrow, but I'm gonna try to see if the weather's good, uh, how many of these I can do. But I just thought I'd show you this guy that uh, I got him because I have a few comparisons that I wanna do. Why not give it a shot, you know? Anyway, guys, uh, that's it for this episode here. It is not clear tonight, so I won't be able to test anything tonight. But uh, those are a few videos that I have coming up uh, side by side and maybe you guys would like to know uh, type of thing. I think this one is an older one as well, made in the Mead, California factory. So it could be possible that this is slightly better, you know, than the mass produced ones now, you know. But who knows, you know. It's hard to tell uh, in, in, by paper or theory or actually testing them side by side type of thing. But I'm willing to give it a shot. Hopefully you guys will want to watch some of those episodes. And I do have members video where once a month I put a video strictly to the members. It does not go live. So if you want to see something that's not on the regular channel, it's only 99 cents a month. You don't have to join if you don't want to, can't afford to, but it's as cheap as I can go and it helps the channel grow so I can buy stuff to obviously show you guys. Anyway, why not you? Why not me?